apply and identify special parallelograms in the coordinate plane. We're at 6.5b. Remember, if you need help, just go to the geometry playlist, okay? To prove that a given quadrilateral is a square, it's sufficient to show that the figure is both a rectangle and a rhombus. We can prove that a given quadrilateral is a rectangle, rhombus, or square by using the definitions of the special quadrilaterals. So here's applying conditions for special parallelograms. We can determine if the conclusion is valid. If not, we can tell what additional information is needed to make it valid. So it's given that segment AB is congruent to segment CD and that BC is congruent to AD. It's also given that AD here is perpendicular to DC. So we can put a little right angle mark there, can't we? It's not the greatest one, okay? It's also given that AC is perpendicular to BD. So AC is perpendicular to BD. So we know those are perpendicular, okay? And the conclusion is that ABCD is a square. So let's see if that conclusion is valid. First thing we do is determine if ABCD is a parallelogram. And we have AB is congruent to CD and BC is congruent to AD. Well, that was given. So ABCD is a parallelogram because quadrilaterals with opposite sides congruent are parallelograms. So now the second thing we need to do is determine if ABCD is a rectangle. Well, it said that segment AD was perpendicular to segment DC. We got that right there. So angle ADC is a right angle, isn't it? That's the definition of perpendicular. And ABCD is a rectangle because parallelograms with one right angle are rectangles. Now what we do is determine if ABCD is a rhombus. And it's given that AC is perpendicular to BD. So ABCD is a rhombus because parallelograms with diagonals that are perpendicular are rhombus. Now the fourth thing we do is determine if ABCD is a square. And since ABCD is a rectangle and a rhombus, it has four right angles and four congruent sides, ABCD is a square by definition, so our conclusion is valid. So how about this one? It says given, this is all we're given, is that segment AB is congruent to BC. The conclusion is that ABCD is a rhombus. Would we be able to tell that a figure is a rhombus just from two segments being congruent? No, this conclusion is not valid. By theorem 6.5.3 from our previous video, if one pair of consecutive sides of a parallelogram are congruent, then the parallelogram is a rhombus. But to apply this theorem, we must first know that ABCD is a parallelogram, and that's all it's giving us. So all we know is we have a figure with two congruent sides. Well, what if we had a shape like this, and this side is congruent to this side? Well, it's got four sides, and two sides are congruent, but that's not a rhombus. That looks like a trapezoid to me. Okay? All right. Now, identifying special parallelograms in the coordinate plane. We can use the diagonals to determine whether a parallelogram with the given vertices is a rectangle, rhombus, or square. We can give all the names that apply all of these, whichever we find out what they are, okay? So we have our points. We've got A is at 0, 2, B is at 3, 6, C is at 8, 6, and D is at 5, 2. And we graph this parallelogram ABCD. We can put in the diagonals because we're going to use the diagonals to determine whether it's one of these, right? And if it's a parallelogram. So the first thing we're going to do after graphing it is determine if ABCD is a rectangle and we're going to use the distance formula. And we take the ordered pairs for A and C and put them into the distance formula and we get the square root of 8 minus 0 squared, which is 8 squared, plus 6 minus 2 squared, which is a 4 squared. So that's the square root of 80, which is equal to 4 square root of 5. We do the ordered pairs for B and for C and put them in here. We get a 5 minus 3 squared, which is a 2 squared, plus 2 minus 6 squared, which is a negative 4 squared. And that equals the square root of 20, which is equal to 2 square root of 5. 
Now, if this confuses you, you need to watch Algebra 1, Chapter 11, because you're just going to get deeper and deeper in trouble for not knowing how to put a radical into its simplest form, okay? And since 4 square root of 5 is not equal to 2 square root of 5, the lengths of the diagonals are not congruent. And ABCD is not a rectangle, which also means it's not a square. But now we need to determine if ABC is a rhombus. So using the slope formula, we put in our x and y values for a and c, and we get a 6 minus 2 over an 8 minus 0. That's going to give us a 1 half slope for ac. And for the segment bd, we get a 2 minus 6 over a 5 minus 3. That's going to give us a negative 2 slope. And what we do is we multiply that half by that negative 2. We can put it over a 1 if we want to, to equal negative 1. Segment AC is perpendicular to segment BD because it equals negative 1 when we multiply their slopes. So ABCD is a rhombus. Let's try another one. We've got these points. E is a negative 4, negative 1. F is a negative 3, 2. G is a 3, 0. And H is a 2, negative 3. We graph parallelogram EFGH. We determine if EFGH is a rectangle with the distance formula. And we do EG with the diagonals, and we do FH, that diagonal, and we look at their distances. EG is a 5 square root of 2. FH is a 5 square root of 2. Well, that means the diagonals are the same measure, aren't they? We came up with the same distance. 5 square root of 2 is equal to 5 square root of 2. The diagonals are congruent. So EFGH is a rectangle, okay? Now we determine if EFGH is a rhombus with the slope formula. We put in the ordered pairs for E and G, and we get a slope of 1 7th. We put in the ordered pairs for F and H, and we get a slope of negative 1. And when we multiply 1 7th times negative 1, it does not equal negative 1. So they're not perpendicular. So EFGH is not a rhombus and can't be a square. But it is a rectangle. Okay, we were able to show that. So you might have trouble identifying a piece of additional information that's sufficient to make a conclusion valid. So once you have the answer, write a complete statement of the given information, draw the figure, mark it up, and recheck it. Okay? Hopefully that'll help. Our next lesson is about the properties of kites, which the second half of that lesson, B, is going to be about isosceles trapezoid. Okay? So if any of this was too confusing, try watching the video again, because it's like when you watch a movie a second time, you find little Easter eggs or something that you missed the first time, okay? No big deal. I'm really proud of you. Keep trying, and I'll see you next time. Bye.